All right, Sam, are you ready to play? I'm ready to win. <laughs> Hi there, Sam and I are about to play Guess That Animal. We picked out some secret animals and we're going to take turns giving each other clues about our animals to see if we can guess what they are. And since it's fall, my favorite season, we both picked animals that have something to do with fall where we live. Are you ready to get started? I was born ready. <laughs> okay, my animal is small and furry. Hmm, oh, is it a bat? <laughs> no, it's not a bat, but it is a mammal and it has a big bushy tail. Hmm, is it a skunk? No, but that's a great guess. In the fall, you can find this animal gathering lots of food, like nuts and seeds and hiding them to eat later. Aha, using only my keen skills of deduction, I have determined that the animal you're talking about is the squirrel. That's right! Great job! You've probably seen squirrels running around where you live, busily preparing for fall. Let's check out this video to see exactly what it is they're doing. Hi, everyone! What is it, Squeaks? You didn't say anything? Huh, I wonder what it is. Let's look at the yard cam. Oh, look! There's a squirrel digging in the yard. You know, she reminds me a lot of our friend Ruffles the squirrel, and she sounds a little like you, Squeaks. Aw, I miss Ruffles too, buddy. Ruffles is Squeaks' pen pal. She's an eastern gray squirrel who lives far away in Chicago, so they keep in touch by writing letters to each other. But we haven't heard from her in a while because it's been winter, and when it's very cold, squirrels spend a lot of their time sleeping. The squirrel in our yard probably spent most of the last few months sleeping too. That's because it's harder for squirrels to find food during the winter. They eat lots of different things. Some of their meals come from plants, like nuts and fruits, and they'll also eat small animals like insects. But there aren't many nuts or fruits around in the winter, and insects spend most of it in a type of deep sleep, so there aren't a lot of them around either. Since there's so little food for them to eat in the winter, squirrels save as much energy as they can by sleeping most of the time. They might only wake up once every few days. They also spend a lot of time preparing for the winter by storing away some food beforehand. And guess where they hide it? That's right, in the ground. It's like they create their own personal kitchen cabinets underground. That's probably why the squirrel in our yard was digging. She was looking for the extra food she buried before the winter started, maybe some delicious acorns. It's not so easy for squirrels to remember where they put all their food, so they have a few tricks to help them know where to look. One trick is to dig it up every few days. That way, they can remind themselves where it is. And at the same time, they can check on it to make sure it's not spoiled. There are no those helps too. They can smell where there might be food buried underground, which helps them remember where they put it. Sometimes they'll also sniff out food buried by other squirrels. They might even take some. By slowly eating the food they've stored away, they're able to make it through the long, cold winter. They do sometimes forget where they've put some of their food. If a squirrel buries an acorn and doesn't dig it up again, it might start to grow into the type of tree that makes acorns, an oak tree. Eventually, oak trees can grow huge. A full-grown oak tree is about 25 meters or 82 feet. That's as tall as a building with eight floors. All from a tiny little acorn one squirrel buried and forgot about. But now that it's almost spring, squirrels will soon be able to find lots of food again. Nuts and fruits will start growing on the trees and there'll be lots more insects and other small animals around too. Then they won't have to spend so much of their time sleeping to save that energy anymore. So if Ruffles isn't awake yet, I bet she will be soon. How about we write her a letter to say good morning? Okay, I'll get the pencils and paper. Oh, good idea, I'll get some crayons too. We can draw her lots of pictures of what we've been up to this winter. Okay, Sam, your turn. All right, prepare to be stumped. My animal has a long neck. Ooh, lots of animals have long necks like giraffes, ostriches, but I don't know what they have to do with fall. Ostriches is a great guess, Jesse, because my animal also has feathers. Ooh, so it must be a bird. That's right. And my animal goes, honk, honk, honk. <laughs> is your animal a goose? 
My animal's a goose, Jesse. That's right. In the fall, you might see geese flying south for the winter. But I've always wondered, how do they know where they're going without a compass or something? You're in luck. Me and Squeeze learned all about that a little while ago. Let's check it out. Hi everyone, Jesse and Squeaks here. We just got back from our big research trip in Cahokia and we missed you so much while we were gone. We learned a ton of cool things, but we're excited to be back at the fort to do more science. And speaking of science, while we were on our way home, I started thinking about how lots of animals travel during the year. Every spring and fall, all kinds of animals migrate or travel long distances to do things like have babies or find food. And that got me wondering, how do they know where they're going? You don't see birds flying around with maps. So I decided to find out. And it turns out animals have some really neat tricks. What's that, Squeaks? You can totally take a guess. Whenever you have a science question, it can be a great idea to brainstorm what you think the answer is. So how do you think animals know which way to go? Ooh, landmarks, great idea. Landmarks are special things you notice along your journey that you recognize when you see them again. Like how when I'm on my way to the store, I know I always have to turn right at the big blue house on the corner. And it turns out animals use landmarks too, except they're not always looking at houses. They might use bushes or logs or bigger things like forests or mountains. When they see a mountain that's familiar, they know they're going the right way, except well, here's a question. What if there aren't any good landmarks? Like some animals fly or swim in the ocean, which is just a bunch of water. So how do they know where to go? Squeaks, any ideas? Yeah, that's okay, it's a tricky one. When there aren't good landmarks, some animals that are awake at night, like certain seals and birds, use the stars for directions. They look for things like patterns in the stars, and when they find the right pattern, they know that walking, swimming, or flying toward those stars will take them where they need to go. Isn't that so cool? Sometimes when you chase your curiosity and try to find answers to the things you wonder about, you end up learning something amazing that you never could have guessed. So some animals use landmarks and some use stars, but other animals like certain birds and bees can do something extra cool, something people can't do. They have an internal compass. You might have used a compass if you've ever been on a hiking trip. They have a little needle in them that always points north, so they can tell you which direction you're going. Birds and bees have a compass like this inside them. We're still learning how it works, but these animals can tell which way is north all by themselves. So when it's time to move, they know which way they're facing. And I wish I had an internal compass. That would have made getting back to the fort so much easier. But that's okay, Squeaks and I had a map, and we know which landmarks to look out for on the way, so we didn't get lost too many times. I'm so glad we decided to explore how animals get home though. They do it so many ways, and it really makes me think about how different and interesting each kind of animal is. You're up, Jesse. Okay, my animal is really small, a lot smaller than any of the animals we talked about so far. Hmm, you know, some bats are pretty small. Is it a bat? <laughs> no, still not a bat. This animal is also really slimy. Hmm, definitely not a bat then. Maybe a frog? Good guess, but not a frog. My animal also doesn't have any arms or legs, or even a head, really. Yeah, sounds spooky. But let me think. No arms or legs makes me think snake, but snakes have heads, and they aren't slimy. Aha, I think I got it. Is your animal an earthworm? That's right, Sam. Ugh, I thought I had you on that one. <laughs> If you've ever turned over a pile of dead leaves in your yard, you might have seen earthworms wiggling around in there. Yeah, what are they up to in there anyway? Well, they're turning those leaves back into nutrients other plants and animals can use to grow. Let's watch this to learn how. You know, Squeaks and I spend a lot of time underground, and that means we've made a bunch of squirmy little friends. And if you've spent any time digging in the ground, you've certainly met them too. I'm talking about earthworms. These animals are super cool and super hardworking too. Let's see if we can get the dirt on these wiggly worms. First of all, even though you often find earthworms outside where you find insects like ants and beetles, earthworms aren't insects. Can you spot the differences? Remember what makes an insect an insect? 
six legs, three main body parts, and a hard exoskeleton. Our earthworm doesn't match that at all. Earthworms have smooth skin and a body made up of many small segments. It kind of looks like they're covered in a lot of little rings. And each segment has small hairs that are almost too tiny to see. And even though they're long and skinny like snakes, they're not snakes. Snakes have a skeleton and earthworms don't, but they do have strong muscles. In order to move, the earthworm squeezes its muscles together, which makes its body thinner and longer. Then the earthworm uses those little hairs on its body to hold onto the soil around it and pull itself forward. Have you ever seen a bird trying to pull an earthworm out of the ground? The worm can make it hard for the bird because it can actually hang on to the dirt with those tiny little hairs. Now, just like most animals, earthworms have a front end and a back end. Up front, you'll find their mouth and a teeny tiny brain about the size of a pinhead. But that little brain gets the job done. Earthworms are able to sense light and vibrations so they know when to wiggle away. And when earthworms need to wiggle away, where do they go? That's right, underground. Earthworms spend most of their time safe in underground tunnels called burrows. It not only keeps them hidden from predators, but that nice, wet soil keeps their skin moist. And that's super important because earthworms need to breathe, just like people do, but they don't do it in the same way. They actually absorb oxygen through their skin. And in order to do that, they need to keep wet. That's why you're most likely to see earthworms when you're digging through damp soil or mud. But maybe you've seen earthworms even when you haven't been making mud pies. Have you ever seen them hanging around on the sidewalk after a rainstorm? A rainy day for an earthworm is a perfect moving day. Sometimes one area becomes too crowded with earthworms, so they need to find a new home. But they need to keep their skin moist while they're out moving around. So earthworms use these soggy days to come out and look for a new place to live. Then back into the ground they go. But the dirt isn't just a safe place for worms to hide, it's also their food. As an earthworm moves through the soil, it's also eating the dirt. Earthworms get their nutrients from dead and decaying parts of plants, like leaves and roots, that are in the soil. And earthworms are hungry. They can eat half their body weight in just one day. But maybe the coolest thing about earthworms? As they munch through the soil, they actually make the soil better for the rest of us. How do they do that? Well, the tiny tunnels that earthworms make as they wiggle through the dirt help bring water and air deep into the ground. And that makes it easier for other living things like plants and fungus to live in it. Plus, as earthworms break down all of those dead plant parts, they help spread around all the nutrients that are in them to make food for new things to grow. Some people even keep earthworms in their garden on purpose. They feed the earthworms things like banana peels and apple cores. Then the worms turn those scraps into compost, a rich, smelly, nutritious kind of plant food made from dead plants. To you, it might just look like trash, but to an earthworm, it's treasure. Healthy earthworms means healthy soil, and healthy soil means healthy people, because we need it to grow plants for our own food. So the next time you come across an earthworm, thank them. They're hard at work helping flowers, trees, grass, and plants grow. Okay, let's hear your last clues. All right, my final animal also has feathers. Hmm, another bird, eh? Yep, and it's a pretty big bird too, and has a really weird wrinkly face. Ooh, I think I have a pretty good idea what it is. Give me one last clue. All right, my animal has a fan-shaped tail and it goes gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> I think you're talking about turkeys. Ah, you got me again, Jesse. Is there any animal that you don't know? Anyway, let's learn more about this iconic fall animal while we add up the score. There are lots of great fall decorations out in our neighborhood, and one of the most common ones Squeaks and I see are turkeys. You might know that turkeys are connected with Thanksgiving in the United States and Canada, and people sometimes raise them on their farms. But did you know that there are also wild turkeys? And they're pretty cool birds. There are lots of other fun things to know about turkeys too, from the sounds they make, to how they eat, to the little flaps of skin on their beaks. You might already know one of the sounds a turkey makes. On the count of three, let's all try to make that sound. Ready? One, two, three. Did you make a sound like this? Yes, turkeys say something that sounds like gobble gobble, but not all of them. Only the toms, the male turkeys, make that famous gobbling sound. And they only make it some of the time. 
both tom turkeys and female turkeys, called hens, can make other sounds too, like this and this. So if you ever hear a turkey make that gobble gobble sound, you know it's a tom turkey. <laughs> and I'm going to let you in on another secret about how to tell the toms and hens apart. Look at their poop. Yes, their poop. If a pile of turkey poop looks like a spiral, it came from a hen. If it looks more like the letter J or a question mark, then it came from a tom turkey. One thing that's the same about tom and hen turkeys is what they eat. Adult turkeys munch on things like berries and seeds, and even sometimes small animals like salamanders. But like all birds, turkeys don't have teeth, so they can't chew up their food the way we do. Instead, they have another body part that kind of does the same thing. It's called a gizzard, and it's a really important body part for turkeys and other birds. The gizzard is a small pouch that has a lot of muscle, and if we could see inside of the turkey's body, we could see that the gizzard is right here. A turkey's gizzard is full of tiny stones and pieces of other hard things like gravel. The turkey picks up these hard pieces from the ground and swallows them, and they stay in the gizzard. If a human tried to swallow a stone, it would be dangerous. But for a turkey, the stones in its gizzard act like teeth. When food gets into the gizzard, the muscles of the gizzard squeeze it, mixing the food with the stones inside. This mashes the food up and grinds it into smaller pieces. Then the turkey can use it for energy. The gizzard is just one of the neat body parts that a turkey has, and like the word gizzard, they're also pretty fun to say. Turkeys have two special body parts on their head. The flap of skin that hangs over the turkey's beak is called a snood, and the skin around the turkey's neck is called its waddle. Bird experts can tell a lot about how a turkey is feeling by looking at its snood and its waddle. The snood and waddle are normally kind of pink or red in color, but if the turkey's not feeling well, its snood and waddle get lighter in color. And if the turkey is scared, they can even turn blue. Okay, time for one more turkey fact. You might have heard that turkeys are not very smart. Well, that's not true. Turkeys can be just as smart as other animals. They can learn to get along with people and other animals, and they can even learn from each other. So now you know all about Thanksgiving's famous bird, the turkey. Okay, Sam, are you ready to find out who won? Yeah. All right, drum roll, please. Well, well, what a surprise. We tied. It seems like this game always ends in a tie. Yeah, but look at it this way. If it's a tie, we both win. Eh, that's a good point. And hey, everyone out there can play Guess That Animal too. Just pick some animals, make up some clues, and you're ready to play. If you want to keep learning and playing with me, Sam, and all our friends, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here at the fort. See ya.